Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Crosswinds Church More Than Sunday podcast. This is Chris Coley. I'm the senior pastor here at Crosswinds, and uh, we're excited you're joining us today. We kick off another week of podcasts here, and uh, this uh, this week, I was going to say, uh, today, um, I- including two podcasts from the end of last week, we're, we're talking to people who are going to be teaching some of these classes that are part of phase two. Today, we've got our, our high school pastor, Daniel Parsons, who's going to be telling us about a class he's teaching on biblical justice Enjoy this. All right, I'm here with Daniel Parsons, our high school pastor. Hey, Daniel, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Daniel is just telling me he has been a little bit dehydrated the last couple of days because he's been (laughs) out like fishing on the river. Uh, What river? When I say the river, where, where have you been? Um, I was over by Mammoth area, so I crossed over the whole Sierra Nevadas and then checked onto the other side. So I don't know if like everybody knows. Four and a half hour drive. Everybody yeah. knows this about you, but you're like an avid, like fly fishing. Is it fly fishing yeah. that you do? Yeah. Outdoorsman. Yep, yep. And you, yeah. you actually lead people like you, you do guided like trail walks and fishing excursions. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Take people out and then typically between like six or eight hours and teach them everything that they would want to know or help them get better at it. And yeah. And the, and the people who come out, are they like totally newbies? Are they people who've never done it before and you start from scratch? It depends. I definitely prefer, I definitely prefer people who know a little bit about what they're doing because it can be really tough an eight hour day trying to teach someone how to fly fish. But um, yeah, I teach it. I teach it all. So it just depends. So you were over on the other side of the Sierra Nevadas near Mammoth then this last time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, man. Mm-hmm. That's quite a long ways to go. Yeah. And especially during during this part of the year, most Fridays and even Saturdays, usually I'm out there because I can yeah. get a lot more clients over in that area and it, it just fishes really well. So I'm usually waking from? up at 4 a.m. and getting out where, there. <laughs> where are people coming from to meet you in Mammoth? Are they Are they coming from like Southern California, L.A.? Um, sometimes, um, a lot of times I think it's people like Sonora area, like the two clients I had this weekend were from Sonora. Um, I have a lot of people from the Bay area. Sometimes they're like, they'll even ask about like carpooling out there. And sometimes they yeah. do. Yeah. Um, yeah. some people from Crosslands have, have gone out not to, cool. not to the Eastern Sierra area, but yeah, it just depends. It, they're from all over. Dude. I, um, I, I, so my experience in Mammoth in the wilderness is about... <laughs> oh, no. Is about <laughs> Mammoth is not the wilderness. <laughs> Dude, it's the... Well, not if you stay at the resort where the ski slopes are. <laughs> That's actually pretty swanky and nice. Um, it is. No, really I, I, uh, I, so we had... When we were living in Las Vegas, we had a Honda Element. And um, I saw that you could buy... Honda Element's kind of a weird-looking car. It's like a box. But what's cool is the back seats fold down into the front seats to make like a long reclining bed. Sure. All right. Sure. sure. And they, they sell a tent that goes on the back of your Honda element that you pop open the hatch and it's all one, like you've got one big unit, your, your, your Honda element and your tent. Right. Um, It's all just one piece by the time you've hooked it all up. So I, uh, I think I asked for this tent for my birthday or something like that. I think my (laughs) father bought me this tent. It's a couple hundred bucks. And uh, I'm so wait, excited. How old were you at this point? I think Quinn. I think Quinn was probably three years old. So it's probably 13 okay. years ago. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and um, and so I was excited. I was like, we're gonna we're gonna start. We're gonna become campers. <laughs> I, yeah. I, because <laughs> I have no desire to go camping. I'm just not. I don't want to sleep on the ground. You know what? It, <laughs> I used to do it a lot more when I was in like college. And uh, after you've had one rainstorm. Where sure, where you are like sure. sleeping in a twelve inch deep puddle in your tent oh, and having to move into a car, uh, oh. which happened like too too many times. Uh, oh my you god! You kind of go. Eh, I'm gonna go with hotels. So anyway, <laughs> I buy this tent. I'm excited because I can sleep in the car. This would be perfect. And I'm thinking sure. we'll we'll put we'll put like Quinn in the tent. <laughs> it's a terrible idea. We'll put Wait, the you, two adults in the car, in the but it's connect not in the hotel. We'll we'll sleep in the car. Quinn will sleep in the back in the tent part. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, here's where I'm going. We drive through Death Valley. 
we get to Mammoth. We're on our way to Yosemite. That was our plan. We had never been, and we wanted to check it out. And uh, you got to go through Mammoth to kind of get there from from. from You're Vegas. coming from Vegas, okay? Coming from okay. Vegas, and uh, and so I figure out a really great place, like a campground somewhere near Mammoth, to spend the night. And uh, we're very excited about this. And so uh, we pull in, and I'm about to pay the person at the guard shack or wherever you're, you're at as you pull okay. onto like a park. And there's a sign up that says like bear warning. And I'm oh, like, no. what? And so I ask the person, Hey, what, what's this about? And they say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last night we, we had a bear come into camp and oh, uh, just start going through people's stuff. And, and so we're just kind of <laughs> giving everybody a heads up. There's, there's bears around right now. And I'm thinking, are you kidding me? I'm going to put my three-year-old in the back. We're in the table. I'm in the, <laughs> this is not going to work. This is not going to work. And so we 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 made a about thirty seconds of of discussion. Uh, we made a decision. Sure. We will not do this. And uh, we drove to like a cheap motel that we found in the area. I feel like I feel like it was like flea ridden. It was bad, man. Well, this pretty much just as dangerous. Just as dangerous. As yeah, <laughs> it's actually probably true. In fact, I don't even think that this room had enough room for all of us. I think it was like a double bed for three people. I think Quinn probably slept on the floor. It was gross, man. <laughs> it was it was terrible. So and uh, it was a bad experience. We didn't have any money, so we were. That's part of where we were camping. Anyway, long right. story short, that's my experience of mammoth. I think there's bears all over. That's what I'm trying you to never, say. There is have, bears all over. But <laughs> have you run into a bear at all while you're out there fishing? Um. Yeah, yeah, but never in any kind of spot where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in danger. Most of the time it was like, oh, it's on the other side and I know I need to get out of here or like I've yeah. got to, I, I I need to not be in this area. What I am more terrified of is, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm far more terrified of cougars because, really? they, oh yeah, bears will make themselves known and I'll have time to like ward them off. A cougar, the way it's been explained to me is it's going to track you down and eat you and you'll have oh no there's gosh. there's no there's no hope that you're gonna like defend yourself they tell you like they tell you you cover the back of your neck and you put a knife to your chest and it needs to be sticking out that's the only way you're gonna survive isn't that crazy wow <laughs> because they they'll they go for your neck and then they're gonna try and get on top of you and so the only hope is they bite your hand and yeah, yeah. so but we have that's, cougars that's way more scary don't we oh, cougars absolutely. a mountain lion isn't it the same thing not yeah, they're in Mount Diablo. They're in the they're right here around us. Yep. Are you? Yeah. Are you? So what I I feel like when I've gone hiking around here, there's signs <laughs> that say, "If you see a mountain lion, make yourself big or whatever." You're trying to tell me that yeah. the sign should read, "Lie down on your back, put a knife to your chest, <laughs> pull it out, <laughs> and just get ready it's, for the for the attack." <laughs> it's pretty much like if they're hunting you, there's you have no hope. Like wow. if it's already stalking you, they're they're gonna get you. It's pretty that's pretty scary. If they presented themselves, it's probably out of curiosity. It's not like they're actually. See, this is you. why you're just convincing me why I don't go camping. <laughs> this is exactly that's that's fair, reason. Fair, I know, I know. After I heard all your explanations, I'm like, okay, now I understand why. Like, why yeah. he that he has his feelings about camping. But yeah, I, I have. Man. I have my best experiences in, in the wild for sure. I, you do, you do. And that's why you're passionate yeah. about introducing other people to 100%. it and all that good stuff. So, yeah. all right. Yeah. Well, Hey man, let's talk <laughs> about your class. Did I say already why we have this podcast happening today? <laughs> I don't think I did. Um, we, we are moving into our phase two here uh, in July. We're going to be moving into our phase two regathering stuff. And uh, what that looks like is on Sundays, we've got four different classes. People can sign up for 25 or less. Once they fill up, we may add some more. Uh, cause we certainly want to get as many people involved in that as possible. Uh, but for those who are comfortable, we've got this 25 or less thing going on, uh, classes and, um, Last week, podcasts, uh, Jody told us about one of her classes she'll be teaching. Sarah told us about one of hers. Daniel is going to be doing a class on biblical justice, and uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to have him come on and talk to us a little bit more about what that's going to be. Yeah. Um, man, I, I think lots of times we we skip past this aspect of biblical justice um, as we look at our faith, as we as we look at what it, what it means to follow Jesus. Um, but the scripture is riddled with uh, themes of, the, or of justice. Um, it's not just Jesus and what Jesus says, but the overall themes of scripture, you can see God um, consistently step up for the oppressed. And so this class is going to be looking at those themes and we'll look at the Old Testament. We'll look at the New Testament. Um, 
we'll look at some theologians who like to talk about this a lot. And so um, there's lots of, lots of good stuff for us to look at. Yeah. Daniel, where does your passion for this come from? Uh, have yeah. you been somebody who has just deeply uh, for a long time been concerned about justice issues and, and finding uh, where scripture speaks to them? Yeah, I would say, I would say especially my, my faith and my desire to see like social justice came into play in college um, mm-hmm. because there was, there started to be professors who, you know, had spent a lifetime finding these things in scripture. And so all of a sudden I was like, wow, actually my faith and the things I believe in regarding social justice, they're actually extremely connected. And so um, that was really encouraging and, and started on a, on a long track of, uh, I would say practical theology, which is more like, okay, how does theology play into our everyday lives? And um, yeah, but also as a kid, um, I would just say, uh, I I lived in very, how do I put it? I, I, there, there was a lot of injustice, I would say, in, mm. in my life and what I observed in the world. Um, and I remember being very young and, and having these convicting feelings of like, man, like there was so much injustice it's almost we can't overcome that um which terrified me and i and i really hated the idea it made me really sad um and then like i said in college to see that oh here's a guy who cares deeply about this who is who's trying to reconcile this world is like okay wow this is even more so a god i can get behind um yeah. even than before yeah yeah i think uh a lot of times when people who are, are people of faith think about the bible think about jesus in their lives Often without knowing it, without knowing it, I don't think mm-hmm. anyone's so. Uh, well, They're not like I don't want. I don't care about this. Get it? Out yeah, here. no, no. What, what I was gonna say yeah. is, I, I think people um, they tend to think that where Jesus and the Bible are relevant is to their personal mm-hmm. moment by moment so situation. So, so I have a conflict with my sister. How am I going to work that out? Mm-hmm. I know. Uh, I, I've read this in the scripture. This mm-hmm. this is good for me. Or hey, I'm I'm going to church today because I think there might be a really good message that I need to hear mm-hmm. on uh, what it looks like for me to deal with my emotions yeah. or or yeah. to understand that I've been forgiven or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that that what you're looking at in, in this class is something that people often don't necessarily realize is. Mm-hmm is a need of theirs to understand. Uh, what I mean is, yeah. uh, unless you are the one who's uh, having injustice perpetrated toward you, mm-hmm. this is not going to feel like a felt need necessarily. Yeah. Right. That's really good. Yeah. Um, and uh, what I'd say is so worth going to anyway, uh, that, that w- when you think about who you would target with this class, I mean, who, who would you hope would come to it? Um, any and all, to be honest. Um, I, I, I would say I think it's going to be really tough. I think it's going to be kind of difficult for, for many people because, um, you know, when, when like you said, if we, consist, or if we constantly are looking at faith as something that directly applies to us, then when we're kind of confronted with an idea that, oh, to follow Jesus means we're conscientious of the struggle and the suffering of other people, that can be really hard to, to first realize and, and, and maybe you might, there might be, tough feelings around that of like, uh, should I have been doing, or should I have cared about this a long time ago? Um, yeah. But really this is for anyone. And um, I hope a lot of my students are there because they care deeply about this stuff. And yeah. I, a lot of my Monday night Bible study kids um, would love it, I'm sure. But this is yeah. a good opportunity for many, many of our adults maybe to get in on the Monday night Bible study action because yeah. we're going to look at it with, um, I mean, we're just going to look at it very academically. We're going to look at scripture, kind of pick it apart in a good way so that we can see what's really, um, really, really powerful about scripture. Yeah. Yeah. That's great, man. I, I think it's going to yeah. be an exciting class. I'm glad you're teaching it. Uh, and I, I hope, I hope that people go who are not just already knowledgeable about this subject, sure. but sure. that if you're somebody who even wrestles with it, that that's really mm-hmm. who I hope goes. If you're somebody who yeah. wrestles with this and you're like, I just don't know. Um, I don't know how to reconcile uh, what I I see happening around me in our nation, in our world all the time with what scripture says. This I think this would be a really good class for yeah. you. Yeah. Um, all right, Daniel, thanks for coming on. Oh, by the way, if anyone wants to sign up, 
uh, go to our website, crosswindschurch.org. That's where there'll be links to signing up for for these things. And do you know when yours is offered? What time? Mine is uh, Sundays at 5 p.m. starting July 5th. Yours is an so evening. I'm, I'm the Sundays. afternoon one. Yeah. Okay. Sundays That's when at my 5. my starts working a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just have to give you time to get back from Mammoth, I think, is the issue. <laughs> Um, yeah, so these will be outside. They'll be uh, in settings where there's fresh air. There'll be masks on that people are wearing. So uh, you'll be socially distant from other people. The classes will be sanitized before and after you get there. So again, uh, crosswindschurch.org, you can sign up. This is the class that has biblical justice as the title. Yes, I think so. Yeah. 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 All right. Thanks, Daniel. Appreciate it, man. You got it.